Hey, what's up, hunters? Welcome to this week's edition of The Loading Screen. We are back again, bringing you another episode discussing all things Monster Hunter. If you're tuning in for the first time, my name is Jin Fury, and I'm here as always to bring some more attention to what is considered by some to be the greatest video game series ever made. As always, I am joined by my digital BFF, a man who truly personifies the term no scope, the one, the only, Fometo. Uh, hey there, peoples. Uh, I'm Fometo, uh, your dedicated retired gunner cultist recruiter, uh, putting down the poker mans for just a little while we jump back into the world of claws and crutches. Today, we're going to have our guest, Asterisk Ampersand, a very, very well known modder from the Monster Hunt modding Discord, and one of our last hopes for a survival as we trek across these frozen icy. The last Scion. Greetings, I am Asterisk Ampersand. Mothers might know me from my Blender plugins, miners might know me from my Quest data dumps, and players mostly know about me from my safe editor. For all that are tuning in for help with that, it's in the release tab. You've probably downloaded the source code. Today, I come to tell tales of Monster Hunter modding and hopefully shed the spotlight into the modding community itself. The Horfrost might be barren, but if we can make four fox ears sprout from the guild gulls, we can certainly make orchids spring through the snow. I like it. Excellent. Excellent choice. Excellent way to have that nice monologue. I like that. Uh, one thing we're going to do the, uh, a little bit new this week is we're going to just uh, talk a little bit about why we chose our drinks. As always, that's why we started this whole podcast, was to ch kind of enjoy ourselves and talk about our favorite subjects. So I'll start it off. My choice this week, I went with Crown Royal, but uh, I wanted to get a little festive, and I went with peach on here because I, it's cold here where I live, and I wanted to get a little bit warm. Plus, I think that if I decided to do shots this week, I could probably get pretty hammered in a very, very quick amount of time. So that's where I'm going. I'm surprised you put down the white claws. Oh, I'm not. I don't. I, uh, no. Mm -mm, mm -mm, <laughs> not mm -mm. after that one time. No, we're mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. no, we're good. I don't even. I don't even know what white claw is. To be honest with you, I forgot. I don't even know. Like, mm -mm. Okay. Is the pop filter red because of that event? Uh, I don't. I don't even know, man. I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know what the white claw is. I'm not sure. It's, uh, uh, so, so my uh, liquid of choice is obviously wine for the usual. Uh, I'm still running through my backlog of 2008s from down here in Paso Robles in California. This is a red blend from Grizzly Republic, one of my favorite wineries. A blend of Cab, Merlot, Zin, and just a little bit of Petite Straw. Um, yeah, I mean, wine's wine. I love the wine. I come here bringing a local Peruvian drink called Pisco Sour. It is not my choice. My roommate came at 2 a.m., decided to throw limes, sugar, water, and pisco into a blender and just replace my lemonade for that. Uh, I discovered this morning that he had actually done that uh, by tasting it. And now we've got a jug full of it. He refuses to drink it, so might as well get on with it. All right. I think it's wonderful that we get to see all the different types of drinks that we're doing from across the world. You know, I'm sitting here, I'm putting down some whiskey for metals, you know, out there in wine country. And we've got Aster out there drinking piss water, Bisco. I think this is incredible that we've got these decisions that we made that are so vastly different, but yet so, so strong. I'm going to have to switch up my game soon. People are going to get really bored of the wine soon. Sure. I don't know, man. You put it down pretty strong and uh, you keep the conversation going. So I don't think it's a bad thing at all, brother. Uh, speaking of which, I think it's time that we get to our first chug down and let's just get these started and then we'll jump right into some subject matter stuff. So, gentlemen, cheers, cheers to Monster Hunter. Cheers. Okay. Oh, Jesus That's Christ, good. Asterisk. And make sure you make another one right away before we jump into anything. Well, I didn't I'm drinking diabetes. This thing is made of sugar. And wasn't prepared. All right. Well, I guess I'm gonna start without Jin while he. So, questions for you, Asterisk. So, how did the Monster Hunter community, like the whole modding scene, come to be? Like, there's so many more people into it than there's ever been before. And do you think we're gonna get a ton more people with Iceborne, or is you think it's gonna kind of die off? Uh, the whole story of the modding community is actually pretty interesting in how it ended up like it is uh, today. It really began around 
six months before we had Monster Hunter World in PC. Well, the modding scene for Monster Hunter has always existed, but it's mainly been small groups that work separately. For example, Kira Nico was a data miner before the idea of data mining was really widespread. He data mined around four and I think he had information even before that. Uh, but modding in the sense of what we have in Monster Hunter World really started with World itself. Uh, but around uh, February, March, I was working with uh, the Smash community for the Wii U. I was looking into modding that game and I wanted models for weapons. And I looked around for Monster Hunter weapons and I found this guy in the Syntax forum called Cyndia. And this guy basically had made a way to import monsters into Monster Hunter Free U, the Wii U version of for you really and we hit it off we talked about how to extract the weapons and while i was at it i actually started looking for what weapons do i want to bring to smash and one of the things i noticed is that the wiki was basically empty there were not that many pictures of the weapon models so i said like it should be easy to script that out if you have a, a plugin to import it and talking with Cyndia, we really hit it off. And when Monster Hunter World came around, he just hit me on Discord and says like, are you interested in modding this game? And I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah. And basically Cyndia started the entire community for Monster Hunter World at least. He brought a lot of old, old timers, well, old timers in for the modding community, people that have like 24 years. Uh, where we mostly skew young. Uh, views, for example, Incognito Man were people that have been in the community for ages, doing mainly data mining, not so much modding. And he basically, we had 100 people in the first week. It was insane. Oh, they were recruiting like- wow. Like 100 good people? Uh, well, we had views. Views is basically the the ever were, the ever views. He He's basically the reason that Monster Hunter World has modding because he f gave us the way to extract the game files from the game itself. He gave us that at day one, basically. And I, at the first day we had really strong people working on the community since the start. Views, for example, Hex also joined relatively early. Uh, Barov is another, early days he was massive in how we started working with ton of things uh there were there's so many people that i don't want to omit but even on the start we had at least 15 20 people that were really technical really skilled and we had like 120 people and just through volume you can get so much work done because they just try changing values until something works so it's you change one bit you change another bit you see if the quest loads if the quest doesn't load you know that okay that bit fucks things up what happens if you change it slightly and they basically brute force map half of it the other half was basically what was done with debuggers and slightly more advanced tools uh early days were the wild wild west it was the first two or three months it was a massive surge rush to push through the files and document things out uh there were it, it was insane you, there was so much activity there was so much going on the first big project that the most hunter world modding discord really had was the custom quest editor because one of the things that everybody kind of felt was that the game was lacking in custom quests and that there were Historically, there's always been those joke quests, like the tiny Uragan, the greatest, ja the greatest uh, Jaggy, which eventually inspired the greatest Jagras one year after. Uh, we were already thinking of that when the game released. There were also, at the time, we didn't really see them as complaints. We saw them as how can we improve the game? One of the topics that was always run through the first days of the game was uh, the fact that Capcom is a Japanese developer. So their view of the game is, of modding is basically, uh, the mother in their head they think that the mothers are telling them that you've made a shit game and we're fixing your mistakes in the early days we said no it's not that it's we're improving the game obviously as time passed on we we looked at capcom code and and now go crapcom is a animated banner that scrolls through the server daily basis <laughs> and yeah so Ba ba it basically started with Cyndia recruiting people. On the first days, it was uh, me, it was Fandiras, Cyndia. Views also came super early. There was Titan. Titan was this guy that didn't own the game, but still he got the files from us and basically just brute forced them until he found patterns. It was That's insane because he- recruited a lot of people, man. Like, like a lot of people in a short amount of time. Any of them involved in Epstein stuff at all? <laughs> uh, not that I know of. Uh, a, a good right chunk answer. of the people that 
a good <laughs> chunk of the people that that joined on launch they are uh, aren't here with us anymore so it's possible that they might have gotten Epstein well uh Ferrandis is still as around managed, isn't he? They managed, that's a coincidence that is uh, a coincidence. Beus is always around in the sense that uh God is always around us. He's in. Whenever you see a good mod, that's the work of Zeus working through his proxies. A, a toast of views then for giving us modding. For making the game the way it should be. Thank you, views. Thank you, brother. Uh, nowadays, he's not that active anymore. I think he still connects like once a month. But early on, he was super active, and he's he single-handed he made pushes single-handedly you wouldn't see him working every day he would do something once a month and modding would advance by leaps it was insane uh a ton of people that were with us those days are much less active now some have i don't think anybody except one person nobody has really left they are just much less active the one person that left was fucking kidnapped by capcom fuck you capcom uh i i think naming is unnecessary at this point we, we all know who it is but i mean i don't want a bad mouth anyone because i'm glad he actually got a real job i'm not to say that your uh, guys' job isn't important i'm just saying like i'm so happy he of made it he made it yeah. like, mad props to him for getting that shit out are we not supposed to say his name because he gets in trouble is that is that something that i, I, I honestly about? don't know i didn't really talk to him about it a whole lot i know we probably shouldn't and especially since like you know, uh, he's trashing he's trashing capcom uh just real quick mad respect to the one that we're talking about we all know that you did a ton for us and we massively appreciate you man before anything goes off i know you probably got to wear it as a shield but i think uh, i hope you understand that you're probably the reason that anyone's playing um, and that's really weird. You know, if you think about that, like if he hadn't shown us some of the things, you know, Aster, I don't know how much your involvement, how like, how, how, it, you know, motivated you would have been because the game before you guys came along wasn't really what I think for, for the people that like, are watching this video, I don't think it was popular. I really don't. I think until they, you guys cracked the code and made it better. I, I don't think it was anywhere near well, what, uh, where I popular mean, as, it, as, it, as it is now or was at peak. To be fair, I don't think modding has done a whole lot to bring people in, but I think it definitely has done a lot to keep uh, A lot of the more significant gameplay mods have actually came up uh, relatively, not late, but not in the at, at launch. At launch, the biggest mod was Transmog, because fuck Capcom, why the fuck does the game not have Transmog? Well, what's crazy is that it does now, but it's still, like, super oh, it, handicapped. It always had it. It always fucking had it. It The way that the Transmog bots work is just using the engine that's already in the game. It's just that the, the game doesn't let you access things that it already has. It's part of GU. It was core part of GU. Why the fuck no. wasn't it included? God knows. Uh, the, the other gigantic mod in the early days was the better NPCs mod by views, uh, which moved the NPCs to the gathering hub because if you're in multiplayer, you don't want to go back every single time you need to do something into Astera. And the uh, indicators, the shiny, the shinies are now visible because which Capcom included in at, at the end, the, the three biggest launch mods have been included in Iceborne. The better finding of shinies was basically fused into Wait, the is that UI. A thing in Iceborne? Yes, the shinies in Iceborne are much more visible than in base game. I have in base not game, they're, is, they is are they are literally a tingle. No, it's permanent. The, you, the indicators for shinies are much more visible in Iceborne. Okay, I don't. I don't. Okay. Uh, Seliana has everything inside of Seliana itself. It's yes. not separate like Astera. The hub is actually and halfway. That place is a huge plug, dude. Huge, huge plug. Way better than 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 base world. Way better. Way better. And Transmog is now well. Transmog has been finally at least enabled to some degree in Nice yeah, World. So. And, and they will add it progressively throughout the year, which fucking sucks, but that's how they're going to keep pre people coming back in. They're going to be like, oh, now you can get these monsters in transmog armors. Like, well... Uh, but, on uh, console. Yeah, on console. I don't know, once PC hits, nobody... Uh, once PC hits, it's going to be even worse because that thing is stored on the save file, so you can probably just mass enable it and have access to all the armors outside. Well, assuming like, it's no need to on mod the it. actual patch. I assume it's going to be like Base World, where we're going to get base Iceborne, and it's slowly trickling content. 
about the oh no 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 uh tron smoke is most assuredly going to be on the safe file you think and all, it's going to be enabled from default you think all the armors are going to be enabled most probably yes okay well uh cool well, you would know the, the the system is is already in the game it would be you would have to put so much effort not to make it part of the of the safe system oh, for the past it's... capcom i mean oh yeah the, the, there's so much shit that they've done they could that do it inadvertently us... i think they would do it on accident that's what would happen it wouldn't be on purpose it would be uh, on accident. no if anything it would be on purpose they do everything on i think they they've... he told us that the coding is like like really really bad man like really bad in terms of like the what it's code for some things is is really shit it's really yeah. really shit uh one of the worst things is for example the way so Capcom, the, the game runs on top of a framework called Empty Framework. Empty Framework is uh, Capcom's middleware solution. It's basically, they've been buying it's been around for years. It's, it's the same as like the creation thing for Bethesda, right? They've been just adding on to it for the past decade. Yeah. Same engine over yeah. and over uh, and over again. It's the engine, it was made for Monster Hunter 3, try, and they've kept it until now, including Monster Hunter World. Monster Hunter World is the last game of Empty Framework, the next game that has Empty... There's no, mo there's not going to be any more games in Empty Framework. Wait, is that confirmed? That. Is the next Monster Hunter game going to be on a different engine? They've they've gone public with the fact that sh uh, Shoot to the Moon is the, their, their main engine. I really doubt that they're going to use Empty Framework again. Wow. Because uh, the problem with Empty Framework is that it's made of middleware. Basically, they've been buying licenses for software for years, right. and that thing has so many legal provisions that adding more things to it basically requires an entire team of lawyers to see if there's a con or that. One of the reasons that we cannot have modding tools, apart from Capcom being a Japanese company and hating us, is that uh, M3 Framework has licenses, and a lot of the things that they use are not theirs, are of the other companies, and they pay a license to use it. Oh. M3 Framework does a ton of the work. But for Monster Hunter World, they actually rewrote a part of the rendering engine, and it's the part that's fucked up. It's <laughs> of course, right? Of the... the bad part. It's... So when the game launched, there was a bug where during cutscenes you would have low resolution textures and it would look like absolute shit. Yep. Uh, that bug was because they rewrote the code for how to deal with zoom levels in terms of quality. And that bug was a mistake when writing a series of ifs. Basically, there was no, the, the ifs were failing early, so it was always quitting at the lowest level possible. The way that was fixed was, in September, Buse patch basically removed all of the lower level textures from the game. That patch will destroy your render, your frames, per, your FPS, because it's always loading the highest quality version, but at least you get the high quality version cutscenes i mean if uh, you had a good pc you could feasibly keep up right yeah or is it, it was just it, tank it because i know the no it was a five frame hit even on bad pieces it okay. wasn't massive but it was still noticeable well it's just because uh, I, I know monster hunter uh's pc port in general is just a huge drain on resources already on launch oh. on on launch there's so much going on but i let got me a high-end machine and that thing was having problems and i mean high-end like top of the line and i was having issues with monster hunter and let's go back to that later because there's so much shit i i could talk about that okay. point in particular so the thing is uh views patch it like that on september basically just load all of the high-res textures on december Capcom finally patched the problem by doing exactly what Views did. They oh, just really? made it an option on the menu. Yeah, on the menu, you could now choose to always use the highest resolution. It had the exact same issue that Views Fix had. It was just on a menu instead of permanently on. It's only until May when they released the HD patch where they finally fixed the issue properly. It took them close to a year to fix the issue. And for around six or seven months, their fix was to do what views had done, which is just low the highest resolution texture. Wow. So how did that happen from a design standpoint? So like Capcom's got, yeah. you know, a, a team of, you know, a team of people behind this. I mean, that's just how employment works. All 12 works. people. What is it? That all 12 people. Well, re whatever, however, whatever there's two people, like how, you know, if something is a year long and one then could fix it in, in four minutes, like how, how does that happen? I, I guess I get confused. Like, like how does that- the PC, the PC port was written by the same team that wrote the main game. They are not a PC team. They are a they are a game development team that 
works on whatever they have. But it, Capcom has a specialized team. For example, in Resident Evil, there's a specialized PC porting team whose entire life is spent honing their PC porting skills and porting the game to PC because PCs have much more intricacies than... Con not much more intricacies. PCs are more varied. Like, you don't know what hardware you're hitting. So you have to be much more careful when you code. And the PC team for Monster Hunter World basically learned to port games to PC by doing it. So their code base was absolute shit. The reason that there were so many patches... But why and, is and why Go one level deeper. Why, why is that? So these people are paid a shit ton of money, right? Like, and then, you know, Japanese you developers guys... no. Yeah, no, they're they're not. They're no. not. It's not like you know a union job in the fuck they have around. What, what do these people make in something like this? I have okay. to assume that okay. you're making like I, I have to... sixty thousand dollars US. No, I have to believe that uh, game developers the same with like anyone that works in like game and anime industry in Japan, being that it's so mainstream. That's like their uh, fast food job over there. No, that's the yeah. anime over there. That's that job. Yeah, but... anime is the worst paid, but video game development is not going to be that. It, it really depends on the position. The thing is that most of okay, the team so here, was... Then, here, then eliminate that, them being a high pay. We can still take the same concept here. In so the, independent of the pay. They're paid to do this. They're paid to do this, right? They're paid to do it. And then you've got a bunch of guys who are like not paid to do it, and you guys got it in a fraction of the time. You understand what I'm saying? Like uh... there's... There's talent levels, and then there's some motivation. I don't understand how I, that... I, I think motivation is probably a part of it. But you're I don't to... want to defend Capcom. Like, I really don't want to defend Capcom. But one of the ways that this happens is also the fact that we have no quality control. Like, People like you make a mod, God. you release God. it, it doesn't go through any checking process. Like, you can basically throw a virus into Nexus, and until someone reports it, it's just going to keep spreading. Uh, Capcom has quality control. They have also have priorities yeah. in terms of what, to fix, what bugs to fix. And there's also the fact that uh, nominally, at least, the Steam Depot does show a quality assurance branch that does get updated. It's how we track when DLCs are going to release because they have to. They push a branch to QA and then they push the branch to the main. I think I'm going to drink every time we lie about Capcom. I'm going to drink for that one right there. So. The thing that probably happened to them is that they had to actually clean the code base and fix a ton of the shit code. Basically, they rushed the game to get it into PC, and then they had to spend time properly fixing it to be able to implement more things. There's a ton of features that they just didn't have on base game. For example, full body sets. We know we know this for a fact, which is uh, because we had the PS4 files at launch. It's how we ported the Horizon Zero Dawn arm to, to PC. We had the files for the game from the PS4 version because there was exploit back then. And for months, we couldn't figure out how to get it into the game because if you look at the, the head, the head would, wouldn't just load. It, you would have the hair going crazy and the game would have issues loading it. But then one day when we got the Witcher patch, suddenly it just worked. We didn't change anything. We didn't change the way the files worked. We didn't touch anything it just started working which means that capcom hadn't implemented full body armors until they hit that patch so and for oh, wait, didn't console, they have full body armors before the witcher like wasn't the, the ryu know, and sakura that was... sakura never released on pc oh that's Street right fighters hasn't released on and pc ryu yet wasn't until 18 oh. erg and ryu isn't that's part right. of pc either there's no ryu yeah, for pc well right. there is ryu for pc but it's not by capcom wait really oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. There's, I, I, there's a PC. blur with what is real and what is not real. Anything is you want real you life? Can get on PC. The only thing we didn't get was the uh, the the that one weapon that we were talking about. Like, uh, which one? The alloy bow? No, the penis blade. Oh, pe that you can make it a reality. You just have to learn to mod. It's not that I hard. Just, just, just give Astro. Just give Astro. like ten dollars. Get it? Yeah. I can make it floppy. Exactly. Oh. It's got to get erect on charge. It'll be perfect. Oh. <laughs> yeah. The most phallic. The most phallic. It would be the best weapon ever. I bet we can get a way to use it. Uh, I'm sure you can. I'm Only sure if you can. plaster it with the word Olay across. Dude, we can do that. Okay, I will give you the money to make that and make it like... It looks like Olay, but it's like really fucking weird. And then as it charges and gets more rigid, the, like the letters stand out. Yeah. We'll do that. We'll make it work and then I'll give it to Olay as a Christmas present or something. 
at the Christmas miracle. Yeah. So one of the things that you said, Jin, that uh, the game ran like shit on launch, even yeah, if you had a yeah. strong PC. Yeah, that's because the game, the way the game was designed was, let's call it future proof in that like Capcom, Capcom, no, Capcom saw 2024. They have this amazing vision and they saw that in 2024, all computers have 32 physical cores. Nowadays, you can get that from a Threadripper, which is going to cost you like 1k dollars. Uh, a little more uh, than that. Did you see the new uh, Threadrippers came out, the third yes. gen? Oh, they're like, like it's, two grand. Yeah, it's so of, pretty. They're very pretty. Has, they are very pretty. They're, it, they're what, 32? 64 uh, virtual cores. Yeah. So at launch, the game would actually try to spin 32 threads. Are you serious? Physical. Yeah. That was why there were so many, like, it wasn't about how strong your CPU was or how strong your video card was. It was entirely, can you satisfy the 32 holes that Capcom 32 Hydra decks want? The answer was almost certainly not. Wait, so it, there... do you think that they were building the engine with 32 core PCs? Kind of left that as the default? My, my guess is that their development machines have thread rippers. Well, and yeah, that they probably. optimize for and they optimize for threat rippers. So they optimize like the game was how to call it. I'm not going to say it's poorly optimized. It's really future proofed because as computer as CPUs evolve, we're going to go into more cores instead of one singular powerful core. So it's not that they were short sighted. It's that they were fucking insane to do that at release, asking for 32 physical, not even virtual, physical. Uh, wow. The reason that people recommended using Special K on the early day was because Special K would limit the number of threads that the game could spawn. Because with 32 threads, what would happen was that your poor PC would have to just deal with it by making threads wait. And because there were so many threads, you were spending more processing power managing them than actually running them. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Which which is like a company that has so many managers that there's no useful output because there's only managers. That's a very good analogy, actually. Eventually, they started fixing that. They reduced the number of physical cores that the game required. And now the game is somewhat smart about detecting how many cores there are, how many threads it can spin. There's still some bafflingly idiotic decisions in the design. Uh, my personal favorite one was the one we found super early on, which is that the audio thread, the one that plays the music, is also the one where the anti-tampering of the game code is. What? So, yeah. So, the way my guess is that the one thread that you will expect to always be running is the audio thread. Because if every... I, I've, accidentally done it several times which is you fuck up the game everything starts crashing you kill the visual you know my computer screens have started flashing like they were fucking possessed several times because of this and the game music will still keep playing the game can crash in so many ways and the game music will keep playing because the audio thread is probably the most resilient one because it has few dependencies and it can run almost independently uh, as a result i believe that capcom put the anti-tamper there La on the other hand, they might have moved. Last time I checked was around December, which was the last time I tried to actually look at the game code because at that point was when we had so much information about the files that we finally stopped looking inside the horrible assembly and actually mod instead of fighting Capcom at how will copy protection fuck us next patch? Now, you think they're just going to kind of drop all whatever security or support for base game once Iceborne? No. Or are they going to patch over it? Because that's there's what they did for be, uh, They just patched over the base game. There is no base gonna, game anymore. That's something that's still on the air. We have ideas on how they could do it, but because base game has to be compatible with Iceborne, and because of how the files are laid out, things, we have some theories on how they will try to implement Iceborne. Uh, None of them is particularly, it's something I want to say on stream because it's, how to put it, when the game launched, we always say that the modding Discord is not a piracy Discord and it's not a cheating Discord. We are focused on changing aspects of the game, but we do not endorse or promote piracy. Fair. Uh, you heard a, it here, people. A, a lot of this goes dangerously close. In I how like can every you pirate the game? game at least twice, deal with it. 
Sounds like you guys are playing a little Icarus, a little too close to the sun there, trying to differentiate uh, between the two, man. It, it, it goes both ways. One of the things that we, we've also talked about is, basically, what happens if they try to remove flooding for Iceborne? And what would happen is that we, if they put protections in, we would try to remove them. And the thing is, at that point, because Capcom is doing that intentionally, we're not going to be too happy about it. So, instead... Capcom can leave the door open so we can get inside the house and get what we want. Or Capcom can close the door and wait for us to bring a siege ram, break down the wall. Now everyone can get in and we leave no fucks because our goal is to get inside. So if Capcom changes the way the mods load, there's going to be modding. It's just that it's going to make piracy so much easier as a side effect. So in a way, it's not a threat so much as a, it's just an inevitable. There's going to be mods, whether Capcom wants it or not. The question is if by enabling modding, we also enable piracy in the way. And that's on them, not on us. Speaking yeah, of enabling mods, um, you know, I, I'm not sure if the viewers are aware of this, but uh, one of the most infamous mods, of course, was the Unicorn Penis, the Kieran Cock mod that came out. Um, we all know that it's not a meme to certain people, uh, but for some of the people that don't know, Astra, you were kind of not necessarily the catalyst for it, but I would say that you were definitely the spark that started up that entire process. And uh, I was wondering if maybe you could, I don't know, elaborate on, you know, maybe that mod in particular on why someone would make that. I don't know. Why you do this, Chin? Why you do this? Uh, so I, the, I should be asking that to you guys. I'm actually uh, not too familiar with this. So what happened was that uh, near the start of the modding Discord, we have a, a, a not safe for work channel. It it lied empty for months. No one used it because no graphic mods graphic modeling really came around november when cray city got the first plugin for importing things to blender it got really strong when ezekiel and i started working on weapon ports on just trying to push 3d modeling we wrote guides we wrote wiki we went super super hard at teaching people how to do this it was not pleasant but we working hard at getting graphic modeling going and it really picked around May when I released a second version of the plugin which was much more friendlier for learning uh, but the thing is we removed the not safe for work section because no one was using it and this guy on the modeling discord another researcher called Dalajin asked like why is there no not safe for work section and I said like no one uses it there's no reason he said like I'm gonna make the first not safe for work Mod. Uh, there's going to be a reason for it and I said like okay fuck you if you make a Kirin horse dick mod as a joke because that was a joke that had been going on forever like give Kirin a dick horses require dicks for some fucking reason uh, if you make that mod I'll just create a, the that was the section. reason behind the mod yes yeah I, I told him that as, as a, it was a meme and don't just challenge fuck, people do, <laughs> do it do it and I, do it and I'll add the section and of fucking course he gets a 3d model of a horse penis from baddragon.com and adds it to the curate and uploads it to nexus as a joke uh the net not safe for work section was created as a result but the thing that happened was that he had to deal with the comments for that thing for so long that's including an amazing including story. including what Jin just said which was a guy commented and said, uh, I know you uploaded it as a meme, but it was more than a meme for me. Wow. It's, it was it's more than a meme to me, baby. Like, I'll tell you right now, uh, one, I'm going to finish my drink because of that. And two, some people in this community, uh, they get, they, uh, they got a lot of free time, man. A lot of free time. I'll just leave it at that. that Sorry, I just... I wasn't aware of this mod, to be honest. I honestly didn't know. And now I, I went and Googled it. And. Oh, there's a sequel, by the way. Uh, someone uploaded dicks for all of the animals and then added vaginas to the monsters as well. What? <laughs> <laughs> Furries. I get it. And I, you know, I was looking at this mod as you guys were talking about it. And I was just like, okay, you know, I don't really get it. But then as you say, it's not a meme to me. I'm like, oh God, I get it. I get it, and now you get it. Now, and now you get I, it. I, I don't know. I don't even know. But okay, if they yeah. want that mod, all the power to them. There you go. It exists. Oh, uh, wow. Okay, I was not aware of it. 
Um, so, Aster, uh, what, else, what else is going on in the community? What are you guys working on right now? Are there any crazy project ideas that you guys got, you know, kind of in the works or anything that you guys have set up for maybe right away for Iceborne launch on PC in January so, here? So, there's so much shit. Well, the modding community always has so much shit going. It's, uh, how to put it? For, for me, every morning I wake up, I, the first thing I do is I look at my, my, my phone and look at the modding Discord. And it's always a pleasant way to start a day. It's finding like, what the fuck have people decided to do overnight? And it's like, this guy decided to port the effects from Kimetsu no Jaiba, Demon Hunter, an anime. He just ported in, well, he's working on them on the game. And it's like, the progress he has every single day is fucking amazing. Crimson effect, it, Crimson's effect on work on effects is top notch oh is that uh, the uh that long sword video you sent me yeah that that's the one uh there's also fandiros working on monster engineering creating new moves uh, changing monster ai there's lyra making the monsters for fandiros super high quality models there's static static makes anime ports he does he 3d models the things himself it's frankly amazing his work is probably the the highest quality we've seen since uber grainy uh rest in peace uber grainy well we haven't seen her for a few months but she's probably well uh there's dave working on maps alongside ice ice is we've got a very in, in fact the chinese modding community basically started discord the modding group dm dmwq or dmqw i forget which is the order uh started as an offshoot of the discord when we were working on custom quests they got to they found out that there were a few chinese users they got together and they started their own modding group they've helped us a ton through research and through actual works uh they they always do amazing stuff they have they basically ported every single eu weapon of the world didn't they uh, import a bunch of uh, final fantasy weapons too if i remember them like I yeah think they they, they did the final fantasy mod friend. super early on yep yep uh there's so many people and I don't want to, want to miss anyone. We've got Neko. Neko also works on monsters. We've got uh, Dave and I is basically working on maps. Well, so right now I'm also working on maps. Map editing is, for me, map editing is a thing that, like adding maps. I know most speedrunners want either flat maps like the arena or ledge central where, where there's a gigantic staircase just yeah, made of ledges. Yeah, zebra. Uh, so my question is that which uh, what are we what are we gonna get right away at, at launch? Are we gonna get like a new map from you? You think uh, for PCI uh, that, As my personal goal, I wanted to have the one of the things is that most of my work is not actual mods that reach the community. Most of my well, the things that I feel most strongly about are tools. Like I, the work I do is so that other people can mod faster, better, stronger, making their lives easier because. The way I see it is, I can make a cool mod in a month, or I can get 20, 30 people making amazing mods on a month. We've reached the point where we have a specialization, which is super important. The fact that we can have 3D modelers that don't have to need about, don't have to need to know about coding to be able to do their work for me is really important. They can go on and make mods, and they have the tools to do it, and are not. And that modding is more about modding and not fighting the game. So my personal goal is to, by December, to finish the map editor, to have the ability to place assets, have collision on the maps. Uh, Dave is working on changing the ways. The, there's a file that loads the, that basically structures the map and calls other files. He's working on an editor for that. And with our work to, and with our powers combined, we will have uh, Captain Planet. I mean, map editing. Well, that would be by December, awesome. that's tomorrow, bro. Yeah, December is literally no, no, no. By, by December. Uh, the next steps are, for example, Fandiros is working with Lyra, Lyra Vale. Lyra is a 3D modeler, and Fandiros is doing the AI and the movesets. And Lyra is doing the, the 3D modeling. Are you the able to looks do amazing. Moves and stuff like that? Uh, we can co they can combine new moves. One of the things that they asked me to look at was, right now we can import animations, but we cannot export them. Meaning we can look at how the animations will work in game, but we cannot create new ones. Uh, Lyra was working on creating new animations. We have some on the showcase. Uh, it will probably require some explanation to, to, for me, to, it will require for me to say why those things are important because it doesn't look major at first sight, but when you get to the, the thick of it, it's basically like a whole new world. And the other thing is if they wanted me to look at the animation exporter, which is something that's on my to-do list as well. It's something that I want to also finish before the end of December, which is exporting animations, because that basically blows up the whole thing. You can actually have custom moves. And more importantly, for the 14 and below, we can have Fortnite dances, yes. Oh, okay. 
please don't. Please uh, don't ever do that. Like, that's the last thing I would ever want in this game. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Um, we can also add teabagging. I want that, yes, yes. Day one, please. I would pay. I, anyone out there, modders, if you're listening, I will donate money for teabagging anime. Like, good good ones, though, not just, like, little lame ones. I need good animations for that. I, I do oh. want to uh, take a moment to talk about uh, Ferrandis, though, because uh, a while back he had asked me if I wanted to uh, fight his custom monsters and stuff. I'd always seen custom monsters uh, early days in Monster Hunter World as just stat overhaul to be absolutely insane values, and they didn't look to me and i feel kind of bad for turning him down to be honest because he kind of reached out to me um so i'm sorry uh but if you want to make monsters that are doable within 20 minutes then i'm on board was that a shout out or a diss what was that I he's, kinda... he's actually he's been working with Aki with Akantorex, so i think he does have some input from the side of the far I feel Aki's input is really valuable in terms of monster design because of all the pedigree he has from just experience and also his he's a really level-headed guy that really understands the game and has ways to give constructive input, I feel. Right, and I've been watching uh, Akan tours about all the custom quests and custom monsters and stuff, and they, they look fun. Um, I, yeah, I just, I don't like hacking away at monsters for, you know, 20, 25 minutes. Kind of why nope. a lot of people don't like Iceborne. <laughs> Nope, nope. Yeah, shout also shout out to Aki for all his support. Yeah. His Hi, work. Aki. We're gonna get you on. Hello, Aki. Uh, like from the morning community, really the runners that have really pushed forward the community and been super helpful and super involved. Like Fem, you Fem, Eugene, uh, Aki. TSC learned to mod, which was amazing. He basically picked it up in a week and has hit Samus armor. That he was made me a simple. sick ass sword. That dude was legit. I missed that cat. That dude made a badass weapon for he me. He still that made the made best armor. armor to date. That Samus armor is still probably the best modded armor. Right? Oh my god, it looks so good. It looks like like you would get from the game. You know what I mean? It looked good. Like not just like oh, a modder made this. It looked like it was well done in the game. I, god, that was some really good armor. Samus shit was badass. Yeah, so, I mean, the, the interactions between the modding community and the speedrunning really enjoy a lot. It Okay. What up? All right, uh, you guys want to pound your drinks before we move on? I just poured a full one. Are you shitting me? I'm sorry, Is that where we're at right now? I just... <laughs> Sometimes you got a man up, right? Got a, you got a mixer in there? Good job, Jin. Uh, yep. Yeah. That's how you do it. Uh, are you now, pounding that hard or you got one. mixers? Give me one second. What'd you say? I said, are you pounding that hard or you got mixers? Oh, no, these are mixers. That was not just straight whiskey. Okay, but. I'm just asking. Okay, so while Jin's getting another drink, uh, a topic that I know you wanted to discuss and that we all kind of were interested in um, is about the... Is it is it Q or Qua? Uh, that whole debacle with the dream... I believe it's pronounced quo. Quo. <laughs> okay. How about no? Um, but yeah, like, so do you want to give the rundown, then of kind of what happened with you, the honey horn runner? So you got to bear with me as I did not witness it live, but um, the man definitely took a stand in levels of trolling that previously were unknown. Um, some people on the community fell on one side of the fence where they thought that it was hilarious and, uh, you know, maybe a kind of slight against Capcom for whatever atrocity people feel they did to them. Uh, or, you know, you fell on the other side of the fence and you thought that, hey, they were supposed to be demonstrating something. They are a, a quote, pillar of the community and uh, they're supposed to, you know, hold themselves to higher standards. 
I don't know where I fall in the situation, to be honest with well, you. I know you what, would I, uh, what I would say in this situation, because one, it's fucking hilarious, and you're definitely not going to deny that the shit's funny. Two, the dudes, the dude matters. Like people watch his shit, like big time, and. I think at the whole point of why we're even doing a show like this, right, is we want to promote the game. We're talking about the, the you know, the, 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 the inside and outside of it. We're breaking it down. We're talking about all of it in the positive aspect as much as we can, even when we're, you know, making a slight of things. And uh, maybe people feel like he had an opportunity to do something positive, and he didn't, because obviously he didn't. So, I don't know, man. Uh, I think we can probably roll the video or something like that and probably really dig into it. And I, I'm going to... video? I, I think we all... Kinda. There's a there's a feed of, of I him, asked you to stream. You had one job. I hope you got the video. It's on it's on Gaging Hunter's Twitter. Uh, I that's clear. Grab that. It, it's it's not that in, entertaining because the well, one just, that's amusing is the Capcom, right? Yeah. Uh, what happened was that. Wait, well, they didn't start fighting into... in the crowd or anything like that. People told me they were like stabbing each other and kids were getting kicked oh, over and babysitters. Well, and y yes, yes, stabbed. but that was the comments. That wasn't the video, and the comments oh, are in Japanese. It was all verbal. Mm. What happened was that uh, Capcom was doing their live showcase of the Resident Evil event, and it was an open session, and Kua got on it. And Kua was live streaming himself while keeping the Capcom feed on the background corner, and he was talking unkindly about the deaths but the thing he did was that he played he did what hunting is not required to do he played support songs specifically he played negate status effect and Rioso really wanted to show the zombie status as a result Rioso just stood in front of Falhasak letting Falhasak pound him like a Japanese schoolgirl lets a tentacle monster pound her uh, for quite a while actually and no zombie it took them a while to realize what was happening, and by that time, Kuwa had already speedrun Balhasak. <laughs> so the, the Japanese were, and and that's that's the main thing. It wasn't Capcom that was that was angry. Capcom just like Capcom didn't care. They can start the next quest, and it was a three-hour stream. Five minutes is not that much of a time loss. Uh, but the thing is that the Japanese went insane. They said, "How dare he ruin Lord Rioso's yeah! perfect hunt? How dare he?" Ruin the showcase that was for the fans, us. I mean, that we event went... was also like you know, 15 days in, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, Monster Hunter Fest. Uh, they went bird clutching insane. Most people, ha it, it was entirely the Japanese fans who made the shit the shitstorm. Capcom gave no shits. They didn't ask anything of them. like open sessions are open for a reason. The guy was having fun, and people just went like Cap Hunting Horn doing what Capcom has asked for Hunting Horn for years the audacity i think it's the japanese fans are cockroaches that that's my opinion my opinion is america why not free oh land of the free home of the brave i'll always side with that freeze <laughs> but then again i will all be about america john where's just someone in south america <laughs> saying um but yeah like i don't think uh q did anything wrong uh it's an open hall hunt. Come on, someone was gonna do something. Yeah, and and he just happened to be, you know, someone that mattered. And 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 it's yeah. I I feel it's a very Japanese attitude. Like the Western oh, community, except ex, except BJ, most of the same Western community reacted the same way that most people would, which is he was. It's you don't send death threats over it. Which the Japanese did. Did he actually get death uh, threats? Yeah, he did. If you read the stream chat, they were going ham at it. They were, like they turned so fast. Kua's videos are negative downvotes, super deep into the negative downvote. Basically, no out, no, no upvotes. They went ham. They hated him. The, the guy became face heel turn on a single act. Okay, so I guess they were that makes sense. His turn. Why he was trying to. Bunch of yeah, 120 pound little five foot tall Muppets coming after him. Like, I don't know, man. It's really that intimidating. Like, I, I don't know. Like, well, the people that play this game are a bunch of basement dwellers as it is. Like, I, well, it's the, it's his fans. Like, the moment fans. that the people start subscribed to your channel. They can't afford Uber to go to his house. How are they going to threaten his life? Like, what are they talking about? Where is this coming from? Well, I, I don't think it's a death threat so much as the hate. 
Yeah, and he, like what, he just took it super Japanese. He went, my honoru has been breached. I must commit Sudoku. He said one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Connected the line, and he's out of social media. No one, at least none of the people that his YouTube channel is still up. He didn't delete his stuff, but yeah, he has he hasn't deleted it. He just he just doesn't respond. I've backed up basically everything that I, I I asked around the horn players. Like, do you want backups of anything? Because I have a script called the civil fuck you civil script. It it's downloads an entire channel. <laughs> Yeah, fuck you, Civil. You delete your channel every 3.4 retirements per year. Started yeah. that. That's the metric for 2019. I did the math. I got an Excel spreadsheet. It, it, it's uh, it was it was took a lot of time to actually figure out specifically how many he was gonna break down this year. Like, wow. Um, I don't know. I so someone's gotta have contacts from uh, Q to get him on our disc. Grifted does. Yeah. Oh wait, really? Nah, -uh, shut no, up. No. Yeah, I was no. like, that's a big lie. Griffin doesn't even play Monster Hunter. Come on. Oh and, man, uh, that's what the they had up there. He would have been funny. He would have killed the monster real quick, and more importantly, he would have been funny. It's a, a jap. It's a. The reaction was so Japanese because it something similar happened to the Final Fantasy community. Where that, where a group, a Western group cleared it super fast. They cleared it in three days. The second clear was on day number six. And you would get these broken English comments saying that they had cheated, that it was the data miners' fault, that they had hacked the server or some shit like that. And they were listing an, an app that everyone uses, everyone on PC uses. The only people that are not using it are on console. And the only console runners are basically Japanese because the Japanese yeah. do not understand computers because it's far too complex for them. Uh, they are all console. And they basically got data miners banned from, from Final Fantasy. Well, not really banned. It's just that they went witch hunting their accounts and Square Enix banned people for data mining, which they hadn't ever done. Hmm. Okay. So to, to me, it just smells of Japanese attitude towards enjoyment of the games in ways which are not what the developer intended. Which is <laughs> that's that's all the people who complain about speedruns is not the way the developer intended us to play the game. All that bullshit argument. Okay. Morals in video games are a joke. I, I I'll never feel anything otherwise other than that, man. I I can't believe the, how people like have these stances on these things. Like it's like almost like a religious belief. In it some is. Of it's gotten that man. crazy, hasn't it? Like, yes, it's what? insane. It's insane. Yeah, not to sidetrack too much, but like just that whole Pokemon debacle. George, how crazy that shit got. People take their games way too seriously. Dude, Pokemorals, Pokemorals. At some point, it's gone from, I really like the game, so I feel strongly about it. And it goes into, I identify with the game, and ergo, attacks on the game are attacks on me. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. That's 100% what it is. I identify as a PS4 game. That's, that's people. I identify as a Squirtle. <laughs> I identify as an attack helicopter. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Those are the people. Uh, speaking of attack helicopters and Monster Hunter, I know that we've got a couple new monsters coming out. Uh, we've got Stygian's and Ogre, and then we've got the new Black Dragon of, you know, some descent. You know, they're hinting at it being, you know, oh, I, I shouldn't say hinting. Some people are suggesting Xenojiva and whatever else, you know. Well, kind I of mean, it's got the same skeleton as... Um, yes, but everything has the same skeleton. I know. I mean, it's, 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 the, skeleton. it's a standard skeleton. It's Lashin has the same skeleton. It's the same shit. It's the same <laughs> Um, Lesh, Lesh, I, I remember when Leshen launched, people were saying Lagombi has the same Leshen, no, ergo, no. Lagombi confirmed. No, I was thinking when Leshen came out that, hey, they probably didn't make a new skeleton from scratch. We'll probably get a new monster as like a Yeti and Iceborne just so they can double up. But they didn't end up doing that. But I thought that would oh, be no. a good idea. Uh, the Leshen skeleton is very similar to the NPC. You it's can just... replace the handler. You can replace Leshen by the handler. Why don't, why don't we properly? have and Handler mod? Because oh, someone man. has kind of already done. I know, I know. I know it's someone. Better no, it's better than Mister X Handler. No, nothing better than Mister X Handler. Nothing is. That's the best. Handler oh, you mean the other way? Replace the Handler by Leshen. Yeah. Yes. Why not? That's a few. Yeah. Um. So, but 
Okay, so starting on the first part of that, I'm glad they brought two monsters in around the same time because they if yes. they had just given us Stygian's in Ogre for December, we would have been like, well, okay, big deal. It's just a variant. And then, you know, we'll get its armor. It'll probably be shit because Stygian's armor's really been all that good. Ogre. And then people would have been really pissed off. Um, however, since we get two monsters, uh, I believe this monster, whatever it may be, will probably upgrade the Dino Jiva stuff because that doesn't have a master rank upgrade yet. Uh, but also, do you guys think it's going to be the actual raid monster? A hey, monster. I'm hoping it's the raid monster. I'm hoping it's the loot pinata I keep talking about because we need to have a bunch of stuff to chase after, to do, and it needs to be something that's a time sink. I'm not. I, I hate to say bring that up, but. There needs to be a reason for people to play this game a whole bunch because right now in its current environment, you've seen a mass exodus. You know, you've seen everyone leave because of Clutch Claw or the trickle out system. Fem, you just hit it uh, right on the head right there just talking about it. Had they released one monster, we would have killed it for the first week. Everyone would have gotten a run and then the second tier would have gotten a run later on and then that would have been it because the casuals wouldn't really go back to it. If they do a time sink like, you know, Call of Was, um you know with you know x amount of new items that takes 20 times randomized whatever they do you know it, it needs to be something that you can't always get what you want it needs to be random based uh because otherwise you're just gonna fly through it now again you're always gonna have the opportunity to save wizard and do all that stuff if you're on ps4 but we can't really focus on that on the one percenters we got to kind of focus on like hey the broad player base um i i do think that having a long long drawn out loot system uh would be just a great thing and i think you hit it on the head there dude if we can get a a raid boss to go in with uh, the Stygian, that would be just a hell of a month, man. I would be definitely back full-time for sure on that one. Well, because then in January, PC comes out, so that keeps us exactly. occupied for the next couple months, if that's the case. I want to play this game all the time. I do. I love Monster Hunter. It's great. It, you know, the community is awesome. You know, that's why we're all here doing this. Uh, you know, the videos are sweet. Uh, I know we don't have too many this week because, you know, we're doing a little bit of a different thing, just calling out some people that probably need a little bit more attention because they don't get credit enough for what they do. Uh, again, shout out to all the modders. God bless every single fucking one of you. Um, but yeah, dude, uh, this game is incredible. It just needs to be fixed. And I, I don't want to dance around anymore. I know that we always talk about, you know, like, hey, what they're trying and what they're doing, whatever. Like, there are some hardcore things that just can be can, can be adjusted. That's the number one thing. They can be fixed. And as soon as they're fixed, I, I'm going to be back full time. No doubt. I'm going to be back. I love this game. And God, I want to kill some of these new monsters. I think you've got uh, three things going simultaneously with why the game is having a player drought, kind of. At least there's a runner drought. Most runners I'm are... Not playing. If I'm not playing, no one's going to play this game. What are you talking about? Duh. I think part well, of I, it is the runner droughts. Uh, understand? Yeah, PCs for a lot of for a lot of runners, PCs coming. PC Please flash no is... gen equals no speed runs. Just make sure you put. Remember, when I left, everyone stopped speed running. Just remember that. Part of it is that PC is coming. Winter is coming. PC is coming, and PC yeah. experience is going to be considerably far more runner friendly. But the other thing is that Monster Hunter World has been running for for ready for close to two years and a half and games have natural cycles of death and if you look at the charts basically when pc launched it was a spike where the game revitalized but it started going down again and the iceborne spike is smaller than the pc spike and it's to some degree it's inevitable games get replaced games stop being played and iceborne is was not going to undo the spike you're not going to get growth out of nowhere you get this spike that start trickling out but I do think that, uh, to some degree, loot monsters help with con maintaining the population that you already have. So that you might not get that much new players, but at least the old players are still playing the game and filling rooms. Yeah. I will say, uh, I'm actually not looking for some piece just when I realize, how the fuck am I going to crutch claw the mouse and keep Good luck! It's going to be so many fucking button inputs for a bow. It's like I have to right click to aim, and then I'm gonna have to hit like. Oh, yeah. just... <laughs> oh, what the man. fuck is that? Got That's an orb weaver. That got racers oh, orb weaver. I got it's a fucking trackball. Leave me alone. How many robots oh, no. did you kill to get that parts, man? That's awesome. I've got a mouse and an orb weaver. The orb weaver has a thumbstick, but also has a small keyboard for your hand. So you okay. control with a thumbstick and you input 
keyboard, keys with your hands. Asterisk, I know you're saying you're talking those. about something, but I keep hearing Orb Beetle because it's a new Pokemon. Oh! <laughs> I bet you get a One Piece set bonus when you wear that motherfucker, huh? <laughs> um, no, okay. Speaking of which, though, uh, day one, I need a mod to one button push Clutch Claw. You can probably just remap. I'll probably. That's do. the beauty of PC. You can just they, remap. They are it. not gonna remap that because it's a series of inputs on a controller. They are not gonna make it one button. Oh, the hotkey macros. Okay, I'm gonna have to do macros, but I mean, it would be nice to have a mod to automatically do it. Just saying. Okay. Um, but yeah. So that, with all that being said, you know, with okay, we got a bunch of new shit coming out in December. Um, that, you know, it's gonna be good. It'll keep us in until sure. Um, do you think we're gonna go in the same route that base game did, where we're gonna have like about every three months going forward, and then they'll just they'll give us like one thing to keep us occupied for a week every month, basically? Well, kind of they, they've do. been doing that since before Monster Hunter World, they've been doing that since before Dry, they've been doing that since the series started. It's been Capcom's MO since forever. Well, yeah, but in the previous games, all that stuff was also permanent addition. Oh, you mean the rotations? The rotations well, are... I know they're going to keep doing rotation. That's a given. So, But do you uh, think they're just going to be like... Are you? Are we going to get... Well, because we haven't gotten any new monsters in the previous games. Like, World's the first game where they're actually adding you know, monsters. Do you think we're going to be like base game? We're going to get like... Or four? That's it? They're just going to kind of play around with stuff? So then, or do you think they're going to go a little bit more ham? In I don't think they really have the resources to go to much, how to put it, a more strenuous schedule. Because uh, even for for one thing about the quest rotations is that Capcom really, really likes those quest rotations. They've The only times they've DMCA'd us has been when we post custom quests and when we posted the, and when Material posted the no, the no rotation, like permanent event quests. Those were the, we've got three DMCA's throughout the history. Monster Hunter modding. The first one was a quest editor, uh, but that one also had music from the game, so that was probably our fault. Uh, then was a quest pack, which was the first quest pack that got DMCA'd instantly. And then there was like material it's... mod, which was the, uh, the same day it was posted, it was DMCA'd. Really? Wow. Yeah. So Capcom doesn't like custom quests because it goes into their territory of releasing those shit slay and slay uh, shay mode on eye patch. Uh, I, I feel they're compared to older games where you had those cool event quests which were different. They weren't necessarily good rewards, but the tiny Oregon, uh all of those joke quests were fun. And they're just not releasing that sort of quality. They are just releasing for base game, they had like five quests which were in 80s, and then it was just 80, 80, 80 and quests were the same. It's kill the fucking well, and now kill in the Iceborne, fucking golden monster. It's hey. Here's all the optionals we never gave you at launch. Those are on rotation now. I don't even know if we're gonna get ATs. I assume we will. There's no reason to take out the mechanic, but yeah, it's it's too easy for them to make them. It's too easy. It's a checkbox. to make them for them not to make it. It's literally it's a checkbox. It's too easy for them to make anything in this game. We've already seen that the AT was like one line of code, and you know we just talked about Stygian and Ogre coming out. You can make a Stygian variant of literally any monster by adding one new attack to it, putting it in a different spot, giving it some different hit zones and a different skin, and it's literally an entirely new monster compared to what we've seen so far. Um, yeah. I, 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 I will... hope they don't keep doing like. I, the three month drought. I hope they've got something, even if it's something every month, I hope they have something new coming out. So at least I want to keep playing the game, want to keep talking about it. One thing every three months, it, I don't know if I can keep an interest. It, it would be tough. I, I did look at the Zenogra trailer and I saw that there was only like one new attack that they showed off, which was Echo Crusher. Everything yeah. else looked like pretty standard Zenogra, unfortunately. But we'll see how it, it, also, is. it also, they added the, that combo that looks like eight where he pulls Lam into the pile drive. Didn't he already do that? I'm. I he haven't kills seen me it all the time, so I don't know. I just die to I whatever. I think he can already do that, but I think he he just gets more combos now, probably. Plus, he gets psycho pressure. Um, I don't think he's gonna be crazy different. I'm just worried about the hit zones. With what they did with Rajang, God, just use Clutch Claw, man. Shut up, Chip. I mean, all of the new monsters have the same issue. I don't, I don't think Capcom is going to change their tune. They want you to use a clutch club. It's very obvious. It's the game. Yeah, I get it. 
I mean, I'm gonna call the, a, a, a timeout here and do a little chug break. Like we're still a little too sober, so let's fix that, huh? Okay. That's right, pour your pee water out of that jug. That's right, that's right. Drink your Cheers, the whole thing, down in one. Ah. All right. Ugh, I hate chugging wine. Fuck. I can feel the sugar cursing through my veins. I can feel diabetes. Diabetes. Ugh. Ugh. All right. Um, Wait, is, is Jin vomiting blood again? I don't know. Jin's... He might just be pouring himself another drink. Why he didn't bring his with him, I don't know. Making a new drink, man. Relax, guys. Damn. I, I told him you were making a new drink. Calm Jeez. down. Jesus Christ. I ain't no lightweight. Shit, this ain't my first time drinking on camera. Shit. In fact, ah. here. I'm going to pour the shots. This is the one for the shots. I'm going to pour the shots into the drink just to prove that I got a little class. Okay. A little extra. A little nice extra. baby sip, Jen. All right. I didn't even sip it. I just poured another shot in there. Jeez. <laughs> So, uh, with what you're talking about with the whole uh, framework being basically disbanded after this, uh, the next Monster Hunter game, which everyone's been speculating already about because we're already tired of Iceborne, is one for the Switch or even the PS5, perhaps. But is that then going to basically have a whole new uh, framework? They've mentioned it in interviews that Monster Hunter World was going to be the last empty framework game. I'm not sure if they are actually going to follow through with because it would basically be re rewriting the entire engine. You would have to put everything... The the shoot for the moon engine is called the RE engine. The R, it, ironically, the RE is not for Resident Evil. It was the first game to actually use it. And from the looks of it, if they actually follow through, with it, it would be... I don't know. It's contradictory because they've said they don't they are not going to use empty framework again, but the amount of effort for world would basically be wasted. You have the assets, you would have some amount of file structure, you would have to build the game from the ground up again. Exactly. And they so, release a monster hunter game like every fucking year. So if they plan to release next year like Monster Hunter whatever, I don't think it's on a new framework. I don't PS5 think that they dev kits just went out too, right? I think that just got leaked out. Those were uh, those were just shown out too. Wait, what'd you say? I don't. The PS5 Most dev kits. kits. Oh yeah, those are out. X at least, and what they look like and crap. Yeah, that's all. But I don't think there's gonna be a Monster Hunter next year, just because Capcom so. has they have intentionally slowed down production on. You don't think so? Like not like even a spinoff, like stories two or something. 2019 has been Capcom's one of, like, fi financially speaking, no. But in terms of game releases, uh, 2019, they scaled back from 2018. They had no major releases except Iceborne. Their investor statements were basically, we are clamping down on, on expenses. We are shrinking down all of our boundaries to focus down strong on core key aspects. But it it doesn't look like they are trying to keep up with previous years they are trying to maintain some level of stability well okay i actually i have to give them props for that at least they're not like you know a or activision or like we have to get bigger and better every single year so i mean i guess that's what fine. do you mean destiny 2 and anthem were great they launched so well <laughs> okay that's that was almost funny i don't i i regret laughing because it was almost ouch ouch Ouch. Those games bombed hard, man. Those games were fucking filth. And that is what it, the exact opposite of what I hope that they release with Monster Hunter. I hope they take two years after the PS5 has been out to make the next iteration of it. Because I would like it to be, you know, that next-gen level. You know, they're all about the environment now and all these other things with, with with outside of the monster. You know, hopefully with the right system, they could really, really blow it up, man. Oh, I'm in, sure they in could. Before, we get uh, Monster Hunter Mobile. Uh, well, I mean, mm. stories is on mobile, but I don't. No, think no, 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 no. Main entry on mobile. No way. They're not yes. gonna do that. Just think of the profits. I mean, yeah. You can play it on, on the, the subway. Profits, I'm sure. Yeah. 
What, wait, wasn't there like Freedom Unite on the iOS or something? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I actually heard that was not too bad. But I'm also just thinking, because they've come out with a Monster Hunter game literally every single year since like 2005 or 2004 or whatever. In some form or fashion. Um, I don't a lot know. of remakes. Yeah, well, remakes and spinoffs and other weird Force. shit. Um, you can... Are they going to stop that? Really? Especially on well, the wave that World's writing with like their biggest selling game ever. Like, To, to some degree, I think that Monster Hunter in particular of all Capcom franchises is protected from the rest of the company because Ryoso is the son of the company's director and is the brother of the company's uh, CEO. Wait, is so, that fact? Yeah, that's a fact. Like, oh, Ryoso, Ryoso like Sujimoto. That. Sujimoto is the, the president of the board of directors. His father founded the company and his brother is a CEO. So the reason Monster Hunter doesn't get all of the marketing, no, not marketing, doesn't get all of the microtransactions that Fire gets, the reason that Monster Hunter has so much in comparison to other franchises is because Sujimoto is, by nepotism, but also through talent, basically shielding the franchise from the, from the corporate side. So well, it's not like... I was saying, I, I was saying, well, that, I did not actually know that. So I, didn't I know we give... Riozo and the Monster and Dollars a lot of shit, but it's also because we actually care about the game kind of a lot because we can see little tiny flaws and want the game to be super popular and the best that it could possibly. Be. And I actually did not know that he was son of the president, head of this chairman, whatever. Why we're like, because yeah, Monster Hunter hasn't had any like transaction, hasn't been monetized to holy hell like every other fucking game out there. Right so, I mean, to that, I do want to give a toast and a cheers to the devs for protecting us from predatory microtransactions. They deserve Like it. Epstein. I guess. <laughs> we talk shit, I hope but we can. This video, the whole video, Fem, and this is something I wanted, I think I brought you. We got to have a slight music playing through the whole video in the background. Do you not rewatch the podcast? Because I, I put me. Yeah, but it needs to be a little bit louder for like the small pauses. What happened here? What is this? What do you got? What are you looking up here? What is this? This is what you're gonna this kill. Cap nice? This is Capcom's board of directors. It's Kenzo Sujimoto, Ryoso's father, is the CEO, and Haruhiro Sujimoto, uh, Ryoso's brother, is the COO. This is outdated because his fuck? father, his father is now the president of the board of oh, directors, not married. and Whoops. and Sorry. his brother is now the the CEO. They've been uh, promoted. Oh. I thought that was a wedding photo. My bad. I fucked that one. I've been drinking. It was black and white. And I was like, what is this shit? I thought it was a marriage. Okay. Um. Crap, I don't know. Uh, at this point. Um, so. PC, next year, drawing people back in. Is there anything that's going to be coming down that, you know, you think is going to be the opposite of the mass exodus that we saw with the Clutch Club? Do you think that the changes that you guys yourselves are making, uh, do you think that, you know, uh, there's going to be some more release? I mean, we talked about the time frame stuff and what they could do, what they might do. What do you think, Aster? Uh, I mean, you know, your insight here on this one is, is something I'm very interested in, man. What does the future hold for 2020 for Monster Hunter for me? I, I think at least for PC, Iceborne is going to be a, going to be a significant increase in u number of users because they've been basically giving away the game for they've been discounting it for the remaining of the year, and I think that modding wise we've 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 finally gotten to the point where we are adding serious content that can basically rival what Capcom has been doing. Some of the things that the Chinese modding teams have been doing is insane. You can if you showed me that and something from the game, I wouldn't be able to tell them apart. Some of the things that uh, Static has been doing, some of the things that, that we're doing with map editing, the monsters that Fandiros is planning, a ton of the of the way of what we're working on now is already reaching the level of... We are not just creeping, uh, creeping the assets together and trying to make do with what we have, and we're actually finally getting to the push, the point where we can push the boundaries of basically what content is in the game. And with more aggressive mods, we think that there's going to be a big... I, I Personally, I think that there's going to be a bigger push for more structured projects and we're going to get bigger things. And in that way, we can get into territories that right now we wouldn't touch because of the way that they deal with 
like the amount of files that you would have to install is big that we wouldn't publish that mod because it would just be a mess if someone tried to combine mods but when you get bigger projects you can just give no fucks because if your mod is so big that it changes everything you just don't look at anyone else you just have that those big projects going through i think that's actually going to to factor in some degree to pcs pc players well and on top of that i think uh a lot of the speed retention rates as well um will also have a big part to play in that because for the most part uh i don't think any pc runners would ever really use a whole lot of mods because like to keep kind of kosher but with just how Iceborne is and how many people want to get rid of certain things and want to play in certain ways, I think if we set up our own set of you know tools on like Shin's website, perhaps, where, hey, these are the mods that we're going to be playing under these rules and have our own categories and our own way of playing and we promote that, then the more casual player base will see it and be more open and accepting to those kinds of mods, which will... Let the doors be open for people just downloading mods and keeping the game living on through mods and not just will focus so much on playing kosher style yeah, just just one thing uh, e even pc players uh even pc runners are using a it's just not mechanical mods because i don't think i've seen a single pc run that doesn't have some sort of transmog oh, or anime a, a girl 100 I mean, we use like all the little stuff um that doesn't horribly matter but i'm talking like you know when we get like yeah no clutch claw hit zone changes new monsters uh we're running custom quests because they don't have it like all that shit that's actually just not part of the game but we're still doing runs and saying hey this is our baseline this is what we're doing then you know i think we're the ones that they're gonna have to show hey it's okay this is what we're doing now I think one of the day, well, one of the day zero mods that I've already scripted, if Capcom doesn't change the file structure, there's a lot of mods which I can just run code and it shits out the mod that some people want. It's going to be making the, the event rotations uh, permanent, is one of the things that runners <laughs> yeah, in yeah, studio huge. use. Huge. Let us hope that Capcom doesn't change the way the quest load works. Yeah, please. Please. All right, Capcom, just, just put out the game. We'll, we'll take care of it. Don't worry. Yeah, just, all we need is the code. Just put it out there and we'll take care of the rest. Well, I really us, hope Astros. that it's not tough for them. I, I really want, like, day one to go right. Like, I, I would like to see everyone come back. It, it would be great. It really well, would. Well, I mean, it's everyone's going to come back. It's more like who's going to be here after week one. It's going to come down to that loot pinata. I'm telling you, man. We get one in December, so enough for the PC player base to have a bunch of weapons to mess with and really over-optimize. Well, we I, don't think, cool I don't think the uh, Stygian, Rajang, and whatever the Black Dragon is is going to be on PC. I think it'll like base game where that'll be several months down the road, and they'll never be stocked up. Socks. That's, Stupid. Socks. That's just that's oh. lets them scatter content throughout the year on two different platforms. It, Sucks. Good business. Though. I know. We can always make advanced previews of those weapons. Right, I get though. that part, but I'm just saying for the more casual people. Oh yeah, absolutely. They're gonna have to wait. Sorry. Well, the way the way most PC players see it is, uh, console is play testing the shit, and given how Capcom releases some stuff, it's actually play testing. The the Q Q and A is. The players yeah we actually got the clutch cloth fixed a little bit it's still pretty bad but they are listening at least so that's cool well okay i know i see you guys over there being like oh. aim aim at head hit the tail aim I at head that hit is, wing. it is still a problem but it is trust me it's better than it was at launch still better shut up Jin. it, it is it, it is a, better it's, it's not better yeah, it's be less honest. bad I, I disagree. it's less I don't bad think... okay yes it is less bad um, like, the, but it, it's, not, has... it, it's not so much that it's magneting to magnet, magnetizing to the wrong zones. It's just that nobody right? likes to use it. Still, it's still shit to you. Like the hit detection is atrocious. It's still atrocious. People are still reporting that the hit detection is atrocious. I've, it's just I've that it's it, and it's still bad. It's it's gone from the switch X series the hit detection into the sticky aim hit detection. It's still not good. It's just it's less horrible. Game. It's probably worse than Steam. It, it's pretty bad. 
and sticky aim could be turned off if Capcom allowed the option because it's just a single. Okay, so speaking fight. of that, is that not? I thought you got that in the current uh, PC version. Is that not a thing? No. Uh, the thing is, sticky sticky aim is a single value with. You can turn it off. It's one single value. The thing is, you gotta refine it on every iteration, and no one really bothered because it's something that's so. How to put it? Only ranged players experience it, and it's something that you would have to find someone with the time to look for it and actually patch it on is, every single patch. Is that a value though that I could punch into like Cheat Engine and then just change every single time I turn it on? Interesting. Yeah. You okay. Well, also make fucking it give me that so I could turn off fucking Sticky Aim every time I load up the game. No, no, no. As uh, oh, yeah. Well, you could also make it a hook and just keep it permanently off. Oh yeah, just give me a fucking injection. I don't care. Hook it up to my veins. Very Jack, technically Jack. speaking, that'd be cheating because you're modifying the game behavior. Eh. In... Nobody cares. Nobody cares about PC runners. Come on. We all know it. Uh, I care about PC runners because oh, they're Jack. the best. I also care. I also care about PC runners. I'll shut the fuck up then. I'm sorry. <laughs> my favorite PC runner is Femato. No, I'm not. Leave me alone. Um. Yeah. You're supposed to chug right here, I think, bro. Yeah, okay. I've I've got one issue. I've gone for an entire jug. I am literally you drank at that last week. Pee, dude, you drank your whole yes. room. I'm at a last jug? wig of wine too. I've only got like a, a little bit of a glass left. He drank all that pee. That's so much pee. Bear girls would have done it's it. So much so sugar. Much I'm going to get. I'm going to get diabetes if yeah, I don't throw this up later. I'm going good. to get diabetes. That's how you get sick. The man. man. All, right. all right. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna pound out my wine then. Pound it down. Okay, okay, I'm definitely feeling buzzed up. Okay, all right, far out, here we go. All Sliding right. all over the place. Uh, the more drunk I get, I just like... Mm. Anything else you guys want to talk about before we wrap things up then? No, nah, man. Uh, wait, do we have nothing else? Uh, I think we kind of hit everything we wanted to talk about today. What's we'll the mod about showcase? Part? I thought we had a whole thing here for like 20 uh, minutes. I was, I was showing some clips of mods and stuff as we were talking about them. Uh, Recording. Let's keep going. Let's do some filler. Let's get something going here for like ten minutes. Some kind of thing going on. What else can I, we throw? Uh, we can on on the showcase, there's there's some things that are that don't look that interesting but are amazing. For example, uh, Lyra animation on Nergigante. It's one of the Wait, videos I've linked. Did you send me a bunch of like a bunch of stuff for us to look at? Yeah, I did. Days? So yeah. the animation on Nergigante. So here, let's pull that. You up didn't then. send me a a Nergigante animation. No, it's a link. It's on the link TXT. Odd class clips, links.txt. Uh, Nergagante. I don't see any Nergagante on the link. Uh, num line number nine, Nergigante animation. Let me paste it on the Discord. Uh, that there we go, yeah. Right, let me so, I'll put my headset on just so I can hear this part. Okay, so. I'm playing it now. What what is this? Yeah, so it doesn't look that impressive. The thing oh, is wait, that is it literally two headed? Yeah, it's two headed, and the most important part is that both heads are animated. Like if you look at it, both heads are moving. There's a yeah. ton of glitches. There's a ton of issues. What? But what this mo what this research was going for was getting custom animations into monsters, animations that are not part of the base game, and getting them to react to the models. And basically, what oh. they Lyra has managed to do is get the custom animations on a monster the way she did That's it is what absolutely I'm talking about, insane dude. it's a ton of work because she basically did it manually at hex level which is a fuck ton of work but wow. it's fascinating like that it's even able to have like that sort of they, she's added animations yeah she's added animations she's added bones to the skeleton i automatically want the hydra monster again like exactly man oh my goodness i want well, every monster to have two heads now i never knew how bad i wanted should have two heads until I saw this video. I've this always wanted to have like a, a Cerberus, like a two headed dog, but one was uh, dragon, one was fire element. It would just kind of attack simultaneously. 
That would be hype. One's like breathing fire while the other one thing's like doing like a attack. That would be sick, dude. Hard to fight. Yeah. If the element choices were interesting, you could even have a use for that dual element weapons. Like fire, if, if the monster has three stars to ice and two stars to fire on one head and the inverse on the other, you would have a reason to use the dual element blades, for example. Dude, that would be awesome. And then it would make elemental bogans that have more than one element. Well, <laughs> it, it, it'd be very interesting in terms of mechanical now, okay, optimization. Hold on, okay, could then could you make it so that the actual monster's heads are two different entities and you have to kill them both to kill the monster? I don't think so, but okay. it's possible to, to make each head basically uh, have different hit zones and give them dif differentiated behavior. Okay, that's still cool, but holy shit. Uh, the other link I posted is... Uh, more work by Lyra. She basically created new animations for Puke. She made Puke stare at the stars. Can you uh, can you link that? Yeah, it's it's linked on the Discord. That's badass. I don't know if he's staring at the stars more like. I she's mean, also getting a neck issue, seizure. but the the amazing part is that uh, she's basically inserted animations she's like the oh, the he can for food, right? Wait, what the fuck? No, his back would hurt. <laughs> hey. His neck like that. That would be very painful. Yeah. She basically added animations into the game. The Nier Gigante one was adding bone motions so that you can have different skeletons that still have animations on every part. And this one is just going ham with how the what, how the standard animations, how you can get non-standard animations. So one was modifying the skeleton. This one is uh, changing the way that the skeleton animates. Oh, okay. That's... Yo, that is a very... Uh your neck thing going on there but all right that's pretty badass the next one is a custom monster by Nack. Nack is a he's an mho he he worked with the patch team for the english patch team with uh alongside hariaka and crimson Morales. Nack was one of the persons that brought us the monster hunter online assets beautiful uh he's been super active on the monster hunter world scene as well oh, he's this been is that, holding like, honorably yeah, this is the Legenda replacement, but it has custom sounds, custom and also has custom visibility conditions, which is when you break the parts, it has different breaks than Legiana because he basically implemented a different system of breaks for it. That's that thing looks awesome. And that's a, is that a Freedom Unite monster or is that an online monster? That's a Monster Hunter online monster. Okay. Think. Okay, uh, that's, that's cool. I like it. Yeah, on you the guys zip... really put in some work, dude. That's fucking sick. On the zip file, there's one called uh, Tail Haha, which is by Tail Haha, which is a Chinese mother. It's a port of Ashbringer, I think it's called, from WoW. Yes. The, that weapon. Yes. That one is. Weapon. Ba... The best weapon. The quality is insane. Like, if you look at it and you look at the game, it, it looks right at home. It's Capcom level quality. I mean, no, it's better than Capcom level quality because Capcom. It's not exactly high. Hold on, where the fuck was that? Was it's it? a GIF. Yeah. I already okay. showed it. But what was it? Tail haha. Tail? Yeah. Uh, tail haha. Oh, got it. Okay. How do I. I gotta figure out how to. You can always just play in the background later on, dude. That's true. I could just post production yeah. magic. All right. I'm going to drop it in the Discord so Jing can see it as well. Uh, yeah. That oh, looks I can't so nasty, dude. Oh my god, how it just flies in with that little ball at the top there. That's so awesome. Okay. Yeah, so basically it's Corrupt Ashbringer, but as a great sword. Yep. That looks so sick. I would definitely uh, use a great sword if that was in the game. 100%. 100% I would. Just for that weapon. Just for how that looks. Um, build a great sword is. Yes, by far. Especially when you find a way to make, make it shoot projectile smaller greatsword dildos. <laughs> I, I didn't expect projectile greatsword dildos. I expected projectile something else. Well, we can all dream. We can all dream. 
So we also have uh, one of Fandira's latest, latest creation, one of his, what's it called? F Furious Flare Diablos. He added a combo to to Diablos. Oh, right, is that the, the hip check combo? Yeah, hip check combo. Right, yeah, that is also. And that actually looks natural too, is the thing. Yeah, as, as I said, like early days we were uh, most monster mods were just give them bigger stats, but nowadays it's change the move set, change how the monster feels, how it responds. The combat is different. Uh, it's really moved forward from the early days of hex editing monsters in trivial things. Uh, the other video from Fandiros is uh, the Odogaron right, right, which is it's showcasing his Monster Hunter Stories mod, which and lets you have. Like Instead of a palico, you can have a monster as a sidekick. And he writes it all the way to to his custom monster, which is the, the Diablos, which has a custom which sets everything on fire. That's awesome. Uh, he wouldn't forgive me if I didn't say that uh, most of the custom models that you're seeing on his mods are all work of Lyra, the one that was doing research on monster animations. I already, doing... subbed, I already subbed Lyra. As soon as you put that video on, I already got that subscribed. Hit that button. Uh, then we have uh, the unidentified Elder Dragons. They are called Doggy. Uh, through Whoa, the power of post-processing. Femedo is probably adding this to the video. I what is trying... this? Wait, this one? is a completely... It's basically completely custom, made by Lyra. Oh, it looks those insane. Photos. Yeah, okay. And the the way the monster is the way the monster is staged and introduced, I think it it's just beautiful. That looks awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, we need those monsters, all those monsters, all of them. So th that's basically the main work on in terms of monster design and monster progress. Then I have uh, the gift by Crimson, which is the Kimetsu no Jaiwa WebM, which is uh, a summary of all the work that he's been doing in the late the last month regarding effects. And it's inspired by Kimetsu no Jaiwa, Demon Slayer, the anime. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the long sword animation change. Yeah, that's a long sword animation change. It looks amazing. There's so much work put into it. There's so much editing to make that sort of thing happen. The the explosion with the waves is just and it looks insane. Fantastic. Yeah. No, There's so much polish. Player, or whatever it is. Uh, yeah. Pardon me. Everyone's gonna hate me. But yeah. Man, Pretty these look cool. awesome. I like how it has the uh, the ice effect at the. End. I absolutely love the the wave effect when it does the spirit slash. You get the opening, but then you also get the closing wave. It's so cool. It's, it's just it makes you want to play the weapon. It looks when good. When you see it looks good. Weapon weapon mods are so high quality. Yep. Well, I, I also have. Uh, I also have. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, man. Sorry, I'm stumbling. I'm drunk. Uh, we also have a, a mod showcase by Static. Static is probably the one of, if Lyra is a genius for everything that's monster models and monster research in terms of visuals, Static is a genius for all player stuff. Uh, he made a fairy tale that actually moves. Well, he hates that, we, that I call it fairy, but it's a fucking fairy. It's got ears, it's got a tail, it's a fairy. But the quality is so high that you actually install it despite it being fairy. The ears move along. Uh, they are affected by wind. The tail moves on its on its own. It's well. It it moves from the wind. It follows physics. The amount of work that goes into this mod is like we've seen the I've seen the three months of progress that that have been going for the IO mod, which Kanta commissioned from him. And for the fairy mod was much shorter, but still amazing work. Uh, I have the, IO was... the ears. I don't have the tail. I don't. Yeah, there's an, there's two there's three versions. There's one with a tail. There's one. Uh, well, I, mean, like, I uh, helped I have him. I a GIF for the just the ear. Oh, oh, there's uh, the video is a YouTube link. I've linked it on the Discord. Oh. 
Uh, okay. Well, I mean, I'll let that play. Oh, that does look actually pretty nice. Yeah, I'm not a furry. Me too. Yeah, but not a furry. And I'm also like, not I'm a not a character. I'm not a furry, but I've got it installed. And even if you're a male character, so uh, I helped Static by making a script that basically he did it for a single hairstyle, and I made a script so that it applied to all of them. There was some heavy lifting going there for on the code side, but it was. I, I'm not a fairy. I think that fairies should be doused in Nepal or put into a blender and set a light. But if you are going to make a high quality fairy mode like this, I will absolutely support that, even if I hate fairies. I will support the work. Uh, then he has his IO mod from Code Vein, which has the amount of work that goes into rigging so that the eyes follow along, so that it has facial expressions. It's just absolutely insane. Well, the right, I of... noticed that because most mods don't have the mouth move eating uh, animation yeah. and stuff. Yeah, that's, and that all working is pretty sweet. He spent easily a month doing that, and the glitches are normally more fun than the. Works. You get the the mouth, the mouth, the heads passing out into another dimension. Uh, the way Capcom has models, there's still some things that even if I even if I spent hours writing a better importer. We'll never be able to get our get, get around the things that Capcom has fucked up. Uh, he also went full ham and did the man did custom mantles with custom Those effects. So sick! Wow. Crimson did the work on effects, and Static did the did on did the work on models and the direction for ha what he wanted each model to each mantle to be. I think the glider mantle looks absolutely insane. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. They put a lot of work in that. That's awesome. Yeah, it, it, it's insane. Then you've got the Tharja mod with the, with the Slinger. The Slinger uses a, a technique that we had before, which is we harness the power of the waterfall textures in the game, and we use it to create mo moving textures for things that are not waterfalls. So, is that it, just it a was water some... texture then? Recolored water texture? It's, it's well... Calling it just a recolored water texture is a bit uh, diminishing of the work. There's a ton of work going into it because you can change the way the water by editing the parameters of the texture. And it uses a ton of maps, which are composited. So he went and edited all of those so that you, he would have the effect that he wanted, that he had already like designed. There's, there's so much flexibility and there's so much work into getting things work just right by, by editing those, those parameters. So, at the base, it's a it's a waterfall, but there's so much more going into it by by doing that sort of edit. All new stuff. This stuff was around when I was playing on Me either. Probably would play then a little we, bit longer. The other thing, the other things that we have are things that are closer to my. Well, uh, I'm into visual modding, but right now the main thing that's taking my time is map editing. Right. Uh, the the main. The main yeah, the main people that basically. Did the science, did the hard work, did the hard effort before I came were uh, Dave, you are, 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 they were, uh, Ice, which is a Chinese modder that joined us with tons of knowledge about the, the game's collisions, and Death Cream, who did a, a ton of the most, let's document everything out. Uh, Death Cream cataloged things more than, than did Active Preacher, but still, it was a massive amount of work. And one of the first things that we went into was the debug map, which I which I've shown before to you and, and Jin, I think. Yeah. Uh, the awesome. debug map, it's absolutely gargantuan. For example, if you can pull out the that plot-like image, which is a white plot, uh, there's a small square in the middle, if you at it. That small square that says Northwest map, Northeast map, Southeast map, Southwest map, is the size of a normal game map. So you could fit the entire game into this map and still have space to spare. That's nice. And That's nice. if you look, if you look at uh, the the brown brown like image SD four oh eight, that one is a three D rendering of the entire map, and you can immediately notice that you've got this uh, sort of it's not really a racetrack because if you look at the at the full size image, for example, uh, wait, where's the video? Uh, one sec. It's called. Uh, it's the it's the one that's called uh, the back map full explore. 
So you, you can see that the map is absolutely gigantic. You've got this gigan absolutely massive walls, taller than anything in the game, even higher than than the Coral Highlands Peak. Right, you said and, that a while back and I recorded it. Yeah, one of the things about that map is that it really makes you think that at one point they thought about making the game an open world. Because you've got this gigantic track that goes around and one of the images I've, I've attached is that Sora Magdaros fits quite well inside of that debug map. Uh, you should be seeing the image around now. And the, the fact that Sora Magdaros fits, that you've got these bridges above, like it looks like you were supposed to run into the bridge and drop on him. Uh, these giant towers that if you you put out some imagination in it, they could be the giant tree on the ancient forest, they could be the giant pillar on the wildfire waste, they could be the highest point on the Coral Highlands. Like you notice that to some degree, this map could have been the sketch for a game, which they might originally have had. It's just that the amount of resources that this they would be insane. And it was one of the maps that was first researched because it's very easy to edit things into it because it's so empty, but also has collisions everywhere. And one of the first things that Dave did was add a sky to it. It looks pretty dramatic with one. Uh, Other things that Dave has done has been, for example, try to composite maps, which is the image that I've, I'm adding now at the Discord. He also has is in the process of creating a swamp, a swamp area. Uh, through map editing, it's one of the things that, how we test things, how he is also experimental site. And the site that I've been working on, and I want to show out is uh, Ship Collision MP4. It's basically what, uh, through the use of a, views mod for the NPCs you can clip out of the gathering hub and you can see that the character is walking on air more or less so one of the things that I I wanted to test out and, and corroborate is like how are the collisions on the on the gathering hub so you have this uh, ship collision but you also have blender collision and blender collision is the entire map loaded into blender and in red and orange are the collision boxes. You can notice that the places where, where the character can walk on air are places where there's uh, hit boxes, where there's collision mesh, which means that we're on the right track. We've managed to find out which are the collision surfaces. We can load them. So now the last step for me to be basically done with collision editing is to be able to export them, which is my current work. Nice. That's interesting. Then at that point, you could just start adding on to maps, right? Yeah, yeah uh, that's awesome. Th the first the first thing we did around August was Dave asked me to make a, an editor for the IPRs, which are the it's a visual part, like that 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 the tree is physically there. But right now I'm working on collision so that you just don't go through the tree. And with those two things, we basically have custom maps. Soon. Soon TM. Game's gonna get a lot better. Game's gonna get a lot better. The hard work of these uh, amazing workers. We appreciate you, Esther. We appreciate all of you guys and everyone who's been putting in all the effort to make the game more, you know, enjoyable for casuals and speedrunners alike. Uh, I think this has been an absolutely wonderful episode, and I truly thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule, man, to come down here and share your little knowledge with us, especially you know the inside and outs. You know, we never would have seen some of those things. You know, we never would have known what's on the horizon had you not kind of shared your knowledge with us. So, thank you, man. I appreciate you, Fem. You got anything else before we tune out for the week? Um, not a whole lot. I would just like to also thank Asterisk and everyone from the modding Discord for not only helping keep this game going, but also I know I asked your time to time for my awesome quests that for some reason get done, and I don't understand why. Like all the Doom Slayer shit and all the other weapon shit, like TSC made me weapons, and Asterisk and Hesk x had done things that you know i had asked and i i feel really bad but i also like to thank everyone on discord that does stuff because it it kept me playing the game I, you have no idea how happy i was to play doom player for it was it's quite the outfit it was definitely quite the outfit. i'm keeping That's it in iceborne it is forever gonna be my hunter it's a good way to I go man I also want to thank you, you guys, for giving me space to talk about modding. Uh, modding is basically banned discussion 
Reddit, the Monster Hunter Reddit. It's banned on Monster Hunter Kill Guild Hall. Yeah. And if hunters, if speedrunners are somewhat reviled, modding is just not a topic that comes out in, in many sides of the community. So I really appreciate having the space to talk about that, to talk about the things that are hyping us up, what we look for, and also all of the enormous support that the speedrunning community has given the modding side, both in terms of uh, just having numbers because a lot of things that were data mined were basically us comparing what things the speedrunners already knew to what the file said and it's so much easier when you know what values to look for uh all of the both emotional financial support that speedrunning community site has given us such great people you are all amazing people i love you all uh same for the modding community you make every day great you give me a reason to wake up, look at my phone, and go, that's so fucking amazing, every single morning without fail. Oh, how wholesome. Awesome, dude, awesome. Well, thank you guys very much for tuning in this week. We'll be back next week with some more stuff, and we'll figure out what we're going to be doing as soon as we get to it. Talk to you guys soon, and thanks for checking us out. Okay. Bulls. <laughs> <laughs>